Is your inbox packed with unread emails, making it impossible to find what you need? Or maybe you're spending hours sorting through the chaos, but still can't get organized. I've been using Outlook for more than 10 years and have created simple systems and routines that have helped hundreds of thousands through my tutorials here on YouTube. Today, I'll share the best tricks to take control of your inbox, save time and end the chaos once and for all. Before we dive into step one of organizing your inbox, let's talk about why this step is so crucial. Think of your inbox as a digital dumping ground. Without a proper system, important emails get lost, tasks slip through the cracks and you waste time searching for what you need. And that's where folders come in. Setting up the right folders mean you can instantly sort new emails, stay on top of tasks and find exactly what you're looking for without endless scrolling. Now here's the key. I believe that it's most efficient if your email inbox is a mini-me of your overall filing system. Just like when you organize your digital notes, your email structure should mirror your broader filing setup. And why? Because it keeps everything consistent. When your inbox reflects the way you organize your files on your computer or cloud storage, it's easier to find what you need, whether you're in your email or your documents. It's one less thing to think about. So for example, this is a very common structure to organize your email inbox at work. There's a folder for admin, company news, IT, HR, learning and development, personal projects, team and travel. Under projects, you might have folders for project A, project B and so on. Or in your learning and development folder, you could create subfolders for each course or training that you have completed. This way, every email has a designated spot and you can easily match it with your larger organizational structure. To create a new folder in Outlook, open Outlook and navigate to your inbox. Right click on your inbox or an existing folder in the left side panel. Select new folder from the context menu and then name your folder, for example, projects, admin or learning and development and press enter to save the folder. To create a subfolder, simply follow the same steps as creating a folder, but right click on the parent folder where you want the subfolder to be placed. Having set up all your folders, you have two options for sorting them, manually or alphabetically. To manually sort your folders, click and hold the folder you want to move, then drag it to the desired position in the folder list. Release the mouse button to place it. And this option is ideal if you want to arrange folders in a custom order that matches your workflow or priorities. To sort folders alphabetically, right click on the parent folder or your inbox, such as projects, and select sort subfolders A to Z from the context menu. All subfolders will automatically arrange themselves in alphabetical order within that parent folder. This option is useful if you prefer a clean, easy to navigate list that's quickly searchable. Now that we've set up a clear folder structure, let's take things a step further with rules. Rules are a powerful way to automate your email sorting and save time every day. Think of them as instructions you give Outlook to handle incoming emails automatically, keeping your inbox clean without any manual effort. This is especially helpful if you get a lot of emails from specific senders or about particular topics. For example, you can set up a rule to send all newsletters directly in your newsletter folder or automatically sort emails from specific senders or where you had just CC'd into their respective project folders. This means that instead of manually dragging emails into folders, Outlook does it for you, freeing up you to focus on more important tasks. To set up a rule in Outlook, select an email from the sender or category you want to create a rule for. Right click on the email and choose rules and then create rule. From here, you can specify the conditions like the sender's address or specific keywords in the subject line and choose which folder to move these emails to. Click OK to save the rule and Outlook will take care of the rest. For example, if you get regular travel itineraries from your company's travel agency, you can set up a rule to move those emails into your travel folder automatically. Or if you're enrolled in online courses or training sessions, create a rule to sort all course-related emails into subfolders under learning and development. 
This way you won't waste time hunting down emails across different categories. They'll always be right where you expect them to be. You can create multiple rules to handle different types of emails, ensuring that everything is sorted automatically as soon as it hits your inbox. It takes just a few minutes to set up, but it can save you hours of sorting over time, keeping your inbox tidy without any extra effort. One of the biggest challenges with email is the little tasks that pile up and create clutter. And that's where the two minute rule comes in. A simple but effective habit that keeps your inbox from becoming overwhelming. The rule is straightforward. If an email takes two minutes or less to read and respond, handle it immediately. If not, leave it in your inbox or move it to a dedicated to respond folder where you can tackle it during your scheduled email time block. And this way you prevent small tasks from piling up, keeping your inbox streamlined and under control. Just imagine this very common situation. You get an email confirming a meeting time or asking for a quick document. Instead of marking it as unread or moving it to a to respond folder and letting it linger, you can reply, forward or file it away on the spot. It may seem like a super small action, but it saves you from having to revisit the same emails later, freeing up your time and mental space. For example, when I receive quick status updates from my team or when someone requests a specific document or piece of information I have on top of my mind that just needs a simple response, I take care of it right away. It means I don't have to come back to those emails later and it keeps my inbox from turning into a to-do list. So next time you are going through your inbox, ask yourself if you can deal with this in two minutes or less and then act as just discussed. Not long ago, one of my subscribers, let's call her Julia, reached out to me with a problem I believe many of you face. Her Outlook storage was full and she was struggling with what to do. She wasn't sure whether to delete old messages to free up space, but she didn't want to risk losing anything important. At the same time, keeping everything in her inbox just wasn't an option. That's when I introduced Julia to a better solution, archiving. Archiving lets you keep your inbox clean while still retaining access to older emails. Think of it like putting files into storage. They're out of the way, but still there if you need them later. This is especially useful when you want to hold on to project emails or completed work that you might need to reference someday. But why is it better than deleting? Well, deleting emails might feel like a quick way to free up space, but it's easy to make mistakes and lose something important forever. With archiving, you clear your inbox while keeping a safety net. Everything's still searchable if you need to dig it up later. For example, I often archive emails related to completed projects or past client discussions. Alternatively, you could archive entire years, so have them neatly sorted and could go back in time whenever needed. This way, those emails don't clutter my inbox, but I know they're safely stored and can be retrieved in seconds if I ever need them again. Here are three ways to archive your emails. To archive a single email in Outlook, just select the message you want to archive and click the archive button in the top menu. It moves the email out of your inbox and into your archive folder. You can also move an entire folder into the archive in Outlook. Just right click on the folder you want to archive in the left side panel, select archive folder or choose move folder and then select the archive folder as the destination. The entire folder along with all its contents will be moved into the archive, clearing up space in your primary inbox but still keeping all emails accessible in the archive. And finally, you can use Outlook's archive feature if you want to archive emails from a specific time period. Just go to file tools and clean up old items. Select the folder you want to archive and set the date to move older items. Then save the archive file to location on your computer. Don't worry, if you need to find it later, you can always use the search function in Outlook to pull it up. However, keep in mind that archiving your emails does not necessarily free up space. It really depends on the Outlook version, desktop, web or Microsoft 365 you are using and how the archived emails are treated. In some cases, archiving frees up space on the email server but still takes space on your local drive. 
So if you are unsure about your individual case, you might just want to try out different scenarios. In any case, I supported Julia with her problem and she managed to free up her inbox and keep important information at her fingertips. Now, if you found these practical but powerful tips helpful so far and want even more beyond this video, sign up for my newsletter via the link in the description and start making real lasting progress today. Archiving helps you keep your inbox clean without losing important information, but what about those emails that you don't need at all, like newsletters, promotions and other updates that just clutter things up? If you're spending time deleting the same types of emails over and over again, it's time for more permanent solution. Unsubscribed from the noise. Why is this so important? Because every extra email is one more distraction, making it harder to spot the messages that actually require your attention. By cutting out the clutter, you make it easier to focus on the emails that actually matter, saving time and reducing frustration. You can either just go through your inbox and identify those newsletters or promotional emails that you rarely read. Most of these emails have an unsubscribe link at the bottom. Just click it and you're done. Alternatively, Outlook makes this process even simpler with its built-in manage subscription feature. If you open a newsletter or promotional email, Outlook often recognizes that it's part of a subscription and offers an unsubscribe or manage subscriptions option at the top of the message right next to the sender's address. If you unsubscribe, you'll be automatically removed from the email list. If you click to manage subscriptions, you'll be taken to an overview of all your active subscriptions that you can review and adjust. I've made this a routine myself. Whenever I notice a new subscription I don't need, I unsubscribe right away. It's a simple habit that keeps my inbox cleaner and ensures that emails I do see are the ones that matter. Even after organizing your emails into folders and cleaning out the clutter, it's easy for critical emails to get buried. And that's where Outlook's flag feature comes in, helping you keep track of important messages that need follow up or extra attention. This is so helpful because it allows you to quickly highlight emails that require action, ensuring they don't slip through the cracks. Instead of sifting through all your folders to find that one email you need to address, you can just use the flags to create a to-do list right in your inbox. For example, let's say you receive a client request that you need to follow up on next week or a project update that needs further review. Simply flag the email and it will automatically show up in your to-do list on your task section in Outlook. This way you can quickly see all flagged items in one place, making it easy to prioritize your time. And here's how I use the flag feature in Outlook. When I open an email that requires a follow-up, I click the little flag icon next to it in the message list or I right-click the message and select follow-up. Then I usually choose custom to customize the start and due date. Most of the time I set a reminder so Outlook notifies me on a specific date and time, ensuring I never miss a deadline. Even with a well-organized inbox, there are times when you need to quickly find that one specific email buried in your photos. This is where Outlook's search function comes in place. It's a powerful tool that can save you time and frustration by finding what you need in seconds. The value of this feature lies in its ability to help you find exactly what you're looking for with just a few keywords, without wasting time scrolling through your inbox or folders. It's like having a personal assistant that knows where every email is stored and retrieves it in an instant. For example, if you're trying to find an email from a client about a specific project, you can type the client's name and a keyword from the project into the search bar. Outlook will instantly pull up every email that matches your criteria, saving you from digging through countless threads. And here's how you can use the search feature in Outlook. Start by entering keywords in the search bar at the top of the inbox. I often use filters like from, to or subject. One of my all time favorite search prompt is to search for an email that has an attachment. For example, I might search for from colon John Doe has attachment. To quickly find a document 
with an attachment that was sent by John. By clicking on the arrow down right next to the search bar, you can go to the advanced search and specify date ranges and more to make your search even more accurate. I really love Outlook's search function because it's fast, accurate and gets me the results I need without the hassle. With folders, rules and quick actions in place, you're well on your way to a more organized inbox. But if you want to truly stay on top of your email, adopting a zero inbox strategy can be a game changer. The idea is simple. Aim to clear out your inbox by the end of each day so you start every morning fresh and focused. The biggest benefit of this approach is that it prevents emails from lingering in your inbox and turning into a never ending to-do list. When your inbox is empty, you're not constantly distracted by unread messages or nagging reminders. Instead, you can focus on your priority tasks without feeling overwhelmed. Here's an example of how I use this strategy. Throughout the day, I use the previous steps to sort, archive and respond to emails right away. For anything that needs more important, I move it to my action requires folder or flag it for a follow up. By the end of the day, my inbox is clear and I have a clear view of what needs attention tomorrow. And here's how you can put this into practice. Set aside a few minutes at the end of each workday to process the remaining emails. Use the two minute rule to knock out any quick replies, move emails into folders and archive what's done. Anything that requires more effort can be placed into a to respond folder or flagged for tomorrow. This way you'll start each day with a clean plate ready to tackle new challenges. Another technique I have found invaluable over the years is making the most of Outlook's advanced features. Those hidden tools that can really elevate your productivity. But it's not always obvious which ones are worth using. So watch this video next where I'll show you nine fancy Outlook Outlook features you must know to take your email management to the next level and make your workflow smoother than ever.